Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for, for joining us again for another edition of the Virtual American Road Show. Again, my name is Richard. I'm the Cultural Affairs Officer here at the Embassy. And today we're very fortunate to be joined by visiting Fulbright Scholar, Professor Judith Ogden. Uh, Judith is a law professor at Clayton State University in Atlanta, Georgia. And not coincidentally today, she's going to be talking a little bit about Atlanta, Georgia, capital of the New South, home of where I won't give away any of your, <laughs> your remarks, but let me hand the, the floor over to Judith, who's going to talk to us about Atlanta. Okay, well, thank you very much. And uh, I've lived in Atlanta for about 15 years. Um, we moved there when I was offered the job at Clayton State, and we were very excited to move to Atlanta. And I think you understand why as you um, listen to and see my presentation. So, I'd like you to get to know Atlanta. Um, and Atlanta is, of course, the capital of the state of Georgia. Georgia was one of the first, uh, was one of the first 13 colonies, so it's one of the oldest states in the United States. It, <laughs> it's one of the um, oldest states in the United States. It's the 24th in terms of size, and it's the eighth most populated state, but I think that's going to be changing because Atlanta is growing uh, so much. You may know that um, Georgia is the peach state, um, and we're known for our peaches because our peaches are the most delicious peaches you can get anywhere. Their texture, their sweetness, they're very popular, and we put peaches on everything. This is my grandson, and last year after picking peaches, we made a peach pie. We love peaches in Atlanta so much that there are 71 streets just in the city of Atlanta with the, the word, some form of peach tree in their name. Now, it gets a little bit confusing at times because there's so many streets named peach tree, um, but we hate to give it up. So, if I can interrupt, so we have north, south, east, west. Oh, and, and, and how many and, permutations of street there are? Avenue. Boulevard. Yes. Lane. Yes. Road. All it, right. it can get a little, a little scary. <laughs> you think you're in the right place and you're not. So, some statistics about Atlanta. Our last census was, of course, in 2010. We have another one coming this year. And at that time, the population of Atlanta was 420,000. But we expect it to be much higher now because it's really, um, there are really a lot of people moving to. Atlanta. If I can interrupt, because it's 420,000 is perfectly large, but the metropolitan area, I presume, is what people is consider Atlanta is probably closer to um, 5 million. 5 million. Yes. Okay. Yeah, right. so this is just the city of, of Atlanta. Um, and the estimate in 2014 was that the um, population was about 456,000. Um, the weather, the climate in Atlanta, and I think this is one of the best um, aspects of Atlanta. It, um, in January, which is probably the coldest month, the average temperature is about 41 degrees, that's Fahrenheit. And July, which is the warmest month, that averages about 78.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And so we're told that Atlanta has a temperate, humid, subtropical climate with consistently hot, muggy summers and cold winters. One of the things I like about Atlanta, though, is that you have the change of seasons. Even though it's a fairly warm climate, you know, you get the change of leaves, um, colored leaves in the fall, and you get beautiful um, blooming trees in the spring. You get all four seasons. And just to, for our local audiences, 41 degrees Fahrenheit is the equivalent of 5 degrees centigrade. Okay. And I believe 78.8 is the equivalent of 28 degrees centigrade. So, just for local. Yes. <laughs> Only the United we, States understands yeah, Fahrenheit. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> We're still not quite there on metrics. Um, Georgia gets about 52 inches of rain on average per year. Um, and the U.S. average is 38 inches. So, Georgia gets a little more rain. That's probably good for the peaches. Um, Atlanta averages about one inch of snow a year, so we don't get a lot of snow. The United States averages about 28 inches of snow per year. 
So Atlanta doesn't get much, it has a change of seasons, but it doesn't get much snow. But when we do, we have, <laughs> we have a real uh, traffic crisis. So this was in 2014. It was known as um, either Snowpocalypse or Snowmageddon. And um, we really didn't get that much snow. But what happened is they predicted snow and everybody left work and school at the same time and the whole city just gridlocked and people were stuck in their cars for 12, 14 hours. They had to stay there um, overnight. And some places literally only had two inches of snow. But it was, so it wasn't the snow as much, it was the fact that everybody got on the road at the same time. So um, we can't forget about this. And every time somebody sees a snowflake, they would recall the snow snowpocalypse because uh, it was such a, a harrowing um, experience, even though it was five years ago. And in the picture on the right is a grocery store, um, and they allowed people to come in and sleep overnight because they were stuck in their in their cars. So um, oh, southern hospitality. Yeah. Area. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so we don't get a lot of snow, but it, it makes life difficult for us. Um, these are some projections of the um, population. Um, now, this is the metropolitan area of Atlanta. So over here in 2020, it's a little over 5 million. And the estimate is in 20 years, it'll be over 8 million. Wow. This is the metropolitan um, area. And so um, one of our concerns, though, is with such an increase in population, we already have a problem with traffic. And so <laughs> this is only going to get worse. And so one of the big issues that um, is facing, you know, Atlanta and the metropolitan area is how to get people in and out and around, not only the city, but the area around. So when people ask what Atlanta has in common with Fatu, I think we <laughs> need only look at that photograph. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, this, this is probably a morning commute, typical morning commute for a lot of people. So fun. So we'll talk a little bit about the history of Atlanta. In the early 1800s, it was Native Americans living in what is now Atlanta. Uh, two main groups, the um, Creeks and the Cherokees. Um, the, the Creeks were a loose confederation of tribes, whereas the Cherokees had a more centralized culture. But um, this didn't last for very long. This is a, a sad part of um, Atlanta and Georgia's history is with the Creeks, um, they really pressured their leaders to sign a treaty and turn the land over to the uh, state. And the Cherokees were among the groups that were um, relocated west of the Mississippi in the Trail of, of Tears. So um, this is a very unfortunate part of our history. Um, but Atlanta was founded in um, 1837, it was the, at the end of the Western and Atlantic, uh, Atlantic Railroad. And its first name was um, Marthasville because that was the name of the governor's daughter, but that didn't last very long. It also developed the name Terminus because it was at the end of the railroad. But the name was sent, soon changed to Atlanta, which they thought was the feminine version of Atlantic as in the railroad. So that was the founding of the city. And then we're going to jump to the Civil War. The uh, Atlanta had a, a very important part in many aspects of the Civil War. It was an important rail and commercial center. But interestingly, one of the um, big impacts to the war was the result of the fall of Atlanta. So when Atlanta fell, it probably was a big factor in Abraham Lincoln being reelected and probably the eventual surrender of the Confederacy. So uh, everyone in Atlanta has certainly heard of General William T. Sh uh, Sherman. He captured Atlanta in September of 1864. And then in November, um, they burned the city. And more than 3,000 buildings were burned. Um, obvious, um, businesses, hospitals, homes, and schools. And then after they destroyed all these buildings, then that's when you had Sherman's March to the Sea, where he led 60,000 Union soldiers um, from Atlanta to um, Savannah. And so these were all um, important um, 
incident in the very happy part of in this <laughs> yes georgians aren't real happy about that but yeah it was a, i think a turning point in the civil war but um after the civil war even though so much of atlanta had been destroyed um it rebuilt and was really better than ever so in the late 1800s early 1900s it became um, a city of higher learning uh, and really became uh, a college town so you see all the uh, colleges that were established at that time and they're all still there um oglethorpe was established in 1870 morehouse 1879 spelman 1881, Agnes Spot, 1889, Georgia State in 1913, and Emory in 1915. And so in 1888, um, saw the establishment of the Georgia School of Technology, Georgia Tech. Everyone knows Georgia Tech. Ramblin' Rack. And um, Georgia Tech is ranked number 33rd, 33 on the list of the world's best colleges, and Emory is number 82. So. Um, I think Atlanta still is um, a high education center. Another thing we're famous for is Coca-Cola. <laughs> so, um, in 1886, a pharmacist named John Pemberton, um, he created this brain tonic and intellectual beverage and it became Coca-Cola, and um, the company's headquarters are still in Atlanta, and if you come to Atlanta, you can visit the world of Coca-Cola and hear about its history and taste different flavors of Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola from other countries. So we always recommend Coke over that other cola. RC? Yeah, <laughs> that one too. <laughs> okay, so for more. Um, at least four decades, Atlanta has been um, linked with the civil rights movement. And one of the reasons is because um, the Reverend Martin Luther King was born in Atlanta, and you can still visit his home. It's been preserved. And he's a pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church, um, and that's still in existence in Atlanta, and you can visit it. And his gravesite and a National Historical Park are also um, located in Atlanta. Atlanta is also home to the National Center for Civil and Human Rights, and it's dedicated not only to the um, civil rights movement in the United States, but the broader world human rights um, movement. Atlanta is a fast-growing city. Um, it's accessible to more than a thousand international business businesses, and there are more than 50 countries that have representation in the city through consulates, train offices, and chambers of commerce. And I feel fairly confident to say that Azerbaijan does not have a consulate there, but that would be a great thing to have. And it boasts the third largest concentration of Fortune 500 companies in the country. And the busiest airport in the world, Hartsfield Jackson, is uh, has the world's busiest airport in terms of passenger flights. And um, they just recently expanded it and added a whole new, um, a whole new building for international flights. So. Um, it's busier than ever. In 1996, Atlanta hosted the Olympics. And in downtown Atlanta, you can still find Centennial Olympic Park. It was built for the uh, Olympics. It's a 22 acre public park. It's right in the center of downtown. Um, it hosts millions of people every year. And there are concerts there, fireworks on the 4th of July. Um, and there are a lot of um, sites around Centennial Olympic Park. For example, the National um, Civil and, and Human Rights Center is actually in the uh, Centennial Olympic Park area. And this is the Georgia Aquarium. It's the largest aquarium in the Western Hemisphere. 
It has hundreds of species. It's really something worth seeing. It's gigantic. Hundreds of species and thousands of animals. It has seven major galleries and more than 10 million gallons of fresh and salt water. So it's always a busy place. It's certainly worth um, visiting. Um, CNN, the uh, cable network, uh, cable news network, is um, uh, headquartered in Atlanta, and it's also located near Centennial Olympic Park. Um, and you can go to the CNN Center and take a tour and see how uh, news is, uh, a news broadcast is put together. The Atlanta Children's Museum is also in um, uh, the Centennial Olympic Park. So there's a, a lot of things to do just right in the center of downtown. The Children's Museum is great. It's for children ages zero to um, eight, and it's a real hands-on type of um, museum where children can um, get involved with projects in music, art, science, all sorts of things. There's a lot going on all the time. Whenever my grandson visits, he always wants to go back to the Children's Museum because he remembers the first time he went there. Other things to see in Atlanta include Zoo Atlanta, and as you can see, we have we have Panda Cam, uh, so you can <laughs> you can see what the pandas are doing. Sometimes they're not doing a whole lot, but you can watch anyway. The zoo was established in 1889, and of course it's grown tremendously um, since then. And um, it's dedicated to conservation and survival of a number of species. They have some animals there that you won't find in anywhere else, and they're trying to preserve the species. The High Museum of Art, um, it has over 17,000 um, objects focusing in seven key areas, photography, decorative arts and design, African art, European art, American art, modern and contemporary art, and folk and uh, self-taught art. So it's um, they've expanded this museum fairly recently too, just to handle all, all the exhibits. The Atlanta Botanical Gardens is also something worth seeing. And, and you can tell by the pictures, they just do fantastic things with um, flowers and plants. And it's, uh, it's a great place to visit. And they have evening tours too, and so that's also exciting. Fernbank Museum of Natural History, it has exhibits inside and outside, and as you can see, dinosaurs are very popular at the Museum of Natural History. The College Football Hall of Fame is also located in Atlanta. As is the Center for Puppetry Arts, and it includes a museum with over 5,000 puppets and other artifacts, and it conducts workshops on puppetry and, of course, puppet shows. Jimmy Carter was the 39th president of the United States, and he is from Georgia, and so his presidential center is located in Atlanta. There's a Legoland Discovery Center, which is indoors and has rides. It has um, 10 Lego build and play zones, and it also has 4D cinema. I don't know what that is. 4D. Uh, I guess you has a tactile element, <laughs> maybe? Maybe, maybe. All right. has some, yeah, it has some Legos to, in addition. Um. <laughs> Delta Airlines is also also has its headquarters in Atlanta, and it has a uh, flight museum uh, where you can see restored planes, and there's also a flight simulator there. So since um, the late 1970s, dozens of dozens of skyscrapers um, designed by 
people like Philip Johnson, Ian Hay, um, Marcel Brewer have reshaped um, the city's profile. So the skyline is quite exciting. Which, can we ask that? I'm sorry, question maybe. Yes, well, which is the IMA? I do not know. We'll say it's that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is one right there. Yeah. Perfect, maybe it's this, maybe it's this one here with the Sager. And these are just some of the downtown, some of the um, architecture when you get like sort of more to the city, like the area and other, other places, are, um, are really very exciting. Okay. So I'm just going to. Tie it up. I, there's a lot more I could say. I was afraid I was going to run out of time, but just briefly, um, I want to mention, of course, we have um, any kind of professional sports that would, would interest you. And college football is really popular. I think it's really popular in the South. So college football ball is probably as popular as professional. Atlanta also has a thriving music industry, all types of that are represented, and it's considered the capital of hip hop. Really? Yes. Yeah. And um, many movies and TV shows are filmed in um, Atlanta and the surrounding area, and Tyler Perry has his studio in Atlanta. Um, and it's very big. It's on 330 acre, acre lot. It was a um, an army base at one time, and he bought it and turned it into studio. And in addition, um, because of its location, if you like to ski, if you like to go to the beach, both of those are in driving distance of Atlanta. It has been. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not in Atlanta, but you can drive um, the, I guess, the southern tip of the Appalachian Mountains come into the, the northwest of uh, Georgia. So you have every extreme, you have every activity you could possibly want. And that's Pretty much the end of my presentation. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Um, before we turn it over to the um, the audience for questions, I would just ask me. I actually didn't know Atlanta had made so many contributions to the world in addition to, to Coca Cola. <laughs> CNN is possibly the the force that has reshaped the world more than any other in the mm -hmm. twenty four hour news cycle. Mm -hmm. what, do you when was CNN started? What what was the the genesis for that? I do not know. It was, was before it, my time. Was it Ted Turner? Was that the <laughs> Yes. Yes. It's right. part of T Turner Broadcasting. Yes, uh, of course. So I don't remember what the year was, but... Um, what would you say, what are some of other contributions that Atlanta has made to... Uh, uh, um, I thought, unfair <laughs> question. Yes, I answered right? everything yeah. I could think of. But well, <laughs> there's, there's plenty in there already, yes. for sure. Uh -huh. It used to be that the airport was, the for, for a long time, the, the biggest... Uh, the biggest factor in Americans' minds when it came to Atlanta. They said, yes. to go to heaven, you first have to change plans <laughs> in Atlanta. Yeah. And that may still be true. <laughs> it, you know, still. it hasn't slowed down at all. 1980? I would say CNN was started in 1980, okay. so it's coming up on its, its 40th on year. Uh -huh. All right, how about that? Um, so we do have a few questions from the audience. Um, what would you say... Uh, this is uh, from Ida. Uh, what is Atlanta's favorite dish? What is its favorite food? Um, hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Maybe take a um, black eyed food. peas. Black eyed peas. Black eyed peas. Favorite dish and favorite thing also. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, and um, this is sort of an inside joke mm -hmm. because I love macaroni and cheese. And they serve macaroni and cheese for every holiday, and so <laughs> you don't usually associate macaroni and cheese with the South, I don't think. But um, everywhere you go, in fact, I was a little upset when I came here and went to Kentucky Fried Chicken, and they don't have macaroni and cheese because in Atlanta they would have macaroni and cheese. Um, um, I'll see what we can do about that. Uh, maybe sweet potato pie. I love sweet potato dishes. Vinegar pie. Vinegar. Vinegar pie? I haven't had vinegar. Oh, good. I'll have to try that. Um, so, uh, Emil asks, what is the, the most, what is Atlanta's most famous university? Atlanta? I would say Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech? Yeah, yeah. Um, it probably rivals University of Georgia in some respects, but um, 
that's outside of Atlanta. That's in Athens. The Athens of yeah, Georgia. The Athens, the real Athens, yes. Um, so I would have to say Georgia Tech. Okay. Yes. Okay. And people, well, it's ranked higher than any other university that we have in the state. And someone asked me recently, yes. oh, my daughter was thinking about going to Georgia Tech. Is that a good school? And I said, yeah, if you can get in, yeah. I would definitely go. I, I would need to tell my students that if you can get into Georgia Tech. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like how I, I applied unsuccessfully myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, it's their loss, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, Hagani asks, uh, "What is your favorite historical place in Atlanta? Your personal favorite?" Well, I think all of the um, Dr. Martin Luther King's. Um, home and um, the things, um, the park um, dedicated to him, and um, I think that's a big part of Atlanta. Um, is you know just their whole take on the civil rights movement. I think it ha it has a better history than maybe a lot of other um, cities in in the country, and I think people don't realize. Um, the diversity and the um, the welcoming attitude that Atlanta has. Yeah, that's fantastic. As a lot of our American Corner and American Center patrons you know, last month we celebrated celebrated Black History Month and, and looked quite a bit at our various corners into the history of Martin Luther King. And we mm -hmm. forget he's often associated with other parts of the South, but he was an yes. Atlantan, wasn't he? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, so, I see that there was some confusion. Some of our, some of our watchers thought we were talking about Atlantis, the lost city. Uh, slightly <laughs> different, but we still are. Exactly. Well, That's perhaps next week, yes. In fact, it's Aquarium, possibly. Oh, okay. Atlantis, Atlantis, right? <laughs> anyway, that's uh, so. Uh, Gulnar asks, "What is, what is Atlantis nature seem like? What is, is there in addition to the?" The city center are there natural parks? And oh, yes, many parks. There are many parks um, and beltways where um, people can walk and ride bikes. And um, no, there are many, many parks in, um, in Atlanta. I think it's a very beautiful city. And it's also been called the city of trees because, well, the state um, um, is known for um, forestry and that whole business. And um, Atlanta has many, many trees, and so even when they're trying to, there's new development, they try to salvage a lot of the, a lot of the trees. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oh, that's really nice to hear. The onion, is that no? The onion? The onion. Vidalia, is that known? Oh, Vidalia onions are from Georgia. But not Atlanta. Not necessarily. It's a, it's, they're from Vidalia, Georgia. <laughs> a little bit south of Atlanta, but yeah, when it's, the Delia onion season, um, you can keep them for a year. So it's, um, and they're very sweet. So they're very okay. good onions. Actually, the big crow peaches in Azerbaijan, yes. We'll have to put on our on our website some uh, <laughs> recipes for peach pies. Okay. Yes. Yeah, well, in yes. fact, if you have one, we could append to this. That would be really fun. Okay. People can make a peach pie at home and, and write in and tell us how it was. Um, Okay, I see we have some questions that were answered later in the in the broadcast. Ida asked what part of America is Atlanta located in? And I think we established that southeast. later in the mm -hmm. southeast, exactly. Uh, uh, Tali asked what is the population, which we four hundred thousand in the city, five in million Green. for the metropolitan yeah, area. Yes. Um, How many universities are in Atlanta? That's a tough question. I'm sure there's a million, right? Yes. Um, yeah, I mentioned some of the better known, but um, yeah, there are um, smaller colleges, and um, the whole university system of Georgia has um, colleges all over the state. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I have to get on the internet, I guess, to yeah, know that's um, a tough one. all of the. Um, but the historically colleges. black colleges and university have a large footprint, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. Let's not forget. Clayton State. Yes, Clayton State also. <laughs> Indeed. Um, so we have the most famous university. Um, is there an animal Atlanta is most famous for? An animal? Hmm. 
the yellow jacket? <laughs> um, from the yellow jackets from Georgia Tech. Right. Uh, so um, the only thing well, you know, who's probably better known is um, is and I think I'm pronouncing it right. Aga, U G A. The bulldog. The bulldog, and they've had a number of bulldogs. Those bulldogs, unfortunately, <laughs> don't live really long. They're, they're well, they're right here, right? Uh, okay, because they can't breathe well. Um, and so the bulldog is always is always named Aga for U G A, and so name, uh, abbreviation for Georgia. The University of Georgia, yes, in Athens, and um, so people have statues of Aga in their yard, and so he's probably better known than the yellow jacket. <laughs> or the white tail deer, which Adam is telling us is the official city oh, animal yeah. or well, state animal of Georgia, is the white tail deer. <laughs> Well, interestingly, I'm talking about peaches, but the um, the official um, plant, is that, I don't know if that's the word I want, it's actually the yeah, peanut. Peanut Mark. It's the peanut. Jimmy Carter, and so Jimmy Carter, that's what, yeah, he, he's raised peanut the peanut. Uh -huh. And so actually it's the official, the official plant, certainly, if that's the word, is um, produce, whatever, is actually the peanut. Excellent. Uh, well, maybe, yeah. Yeah, crop, probably. Yes. <laughs> do, I don't, do we have any more questions from the audience? Oh, wow, fantastic. Um, is there a popular nickname for Atlanta? Uh, <laughs> we were talking about this. It's hot Atlanta. Because it is. It's hot. It gets hot. Um, There's well, another combination, another similarity with Buckaroo in the summer. <laughs> it's steamy. Yeah. Hot, hot Atlanta, but it's not just about the um, the the climate, although it does get hot. Um, but it's hot. I mean, things are happening, and the music scene, and all those all those things just add to make it a hot Atlanta. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Um, what is the name of Atlanta's river? Well, there's a Chattahoochee River. Uh, I think that sounds like the one. <laughs> That's a nice name, isn't it? That goes goes through. Um, how is that again? What is the name? Of Chattahoochee. The Chattahoochee River. Fantastic. Um, so obviously, a lot of these names are Native American names right. that um, that were maintained. Um, do we know? And this is a, a tough question to get out of left field. But how many Azerbaijanis live in in Atlanta? Is there a population there? You know, I really don't know. I know there's not a consulate, and I can't I, I can't say I've ever met anyone. So if the, anyone at the Azerbaijani Ministry of Foreign Affairs is watching, she would heartily recommend opening a consulate yes. in Atlanta, something we wholeheartedly endorse. Um, how, somebody else asked, how expensive is life in Atlanta? Is it an expensive city? No, no, no surprisingly not compared to, oh, LA, New York, and, you know, any of the big cities. That's one of the, I think that's one of the draws to Atlanta is um, that the housing prices are actually pretty reasonable for, um, you know, the size of house that you can buy. So um, compared to other big cities, I think it's um, not particularly expensive. Yeah, okay. well, that's a, that's a big selling point. Mm -hmm. um, Emil asked, what kind of libraries do you have in Atlanta? Well, city. many public libraries. Yeah, the city has many public libraries and then every you know little town around Atlanta has public libraries. Obviously. So oh, well yeah the university libraries. But libraries are a funny thing because you know sometimes you walk into a library now and they hardly have any books. Because everything's online and it has a lot of computers but not not so many books. But yeah, with so many universities. Yeah yeah. Um, and you know it has a great um, book sharing that if you want a book um, and then your local library doesn't have it. You can get you can get books from the universities. You can get um, books from other libraries. Um, fantastic! No, it's a, always have a reputation for being a literate city. Um, a literate or illiterate? Literate. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure what you said. I <laughs> thought you must be mistaken. Exactly. I was going to correct you. <laughs> I definitely said literate. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, uh, the last question we have so far, unless we've got more, um, all is of the, the museums you mentioned, is there one that is your favorite and why? Well, I, I like the High Museum because I like the art museums. Okay. So, um, 
Although I do like going to the um, Georgia Aquarium. I do like that too, but I like art museums and so I like the high. Have you been to the uh, the Museum of Flight or the Delta Museum? I have not been. Yeah, really? your grandson has let you get away with that. Oh, he's, he's still a little young. Um, but I think eventually he'll want to go there. Yeah, I come visit. I'll okay. expect you to take me there. Okay, good. Very good. Well, I think unless there are any more questions, I don't. Um, uh, there's a question from a male asking about um, how long, how many years of school Atlanta has? 11 or 12? How many years of school? Yeah, like no, that's school. in the United and States. Yeah, it's not uh, two years. They're 12, 12 years. Kindergarten, and, everybody goes to kindergarten now. Um, right. And, um, and yeah, and then 12, and then 12 years. But 12 years of primary, middle, and secondary. And after 12 years, you go to university. Yes. So that's across the United States. Yes. That's the standard. The standard. Thank you for the question, Emil. Uh, what are the subjects in the seventh grade? <laughs> in the seventh grade? <laughs> Well, it's got to be English, history, science, you know, the, the, and probably a lot more computer classes now. Yeah, probably. Um, maybe a foreign language. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, <laughs> depending on the, depending on the school. Yeah, um, exactly. Geometry and, is that in? I math think that's anyway. higher. Yeah, I think that might be higher, but yeah, it's been so long question. since I was in school. I don't exactly. Know. <laughs> it's a few years until my child goes to seventh grade. Um, anything else? Any last questions? Well, if not, let me uh, let me say first of all thanks to everybody who uh, who joined us today. We really appreciate it. We're hoping at this time when we're not able to offer regular American Center American Corner programming that you're enjoying this chance to to meet with with Americans who are in Azerbaijan to learn a little bit more about our country, our history, our values, and let me also thank. Judith, thank you so much I for coming. Better. I should say that. Come visit Atlanta. Exactly. These people are all waiting for you. I think Judith is not enough. No. Yeah. But let me just say that Judith will, on March 17th at 6 o'clock, be talking on a subject closer to her professional interests. She is, as I said, a visiting Fulbright scholar here teaching at the at several of Azerbaijan's leading law schools. She is herself a professor of law. And next week, she's going to be talking, starting a series we're doing on the American legal and criminal justice system. And on Tuesday, again, at 6 o'clock on Facebook Live at the Baku American Center Facebook page, she's going to be talking about trial by jury, the, the jury trial being one of the foundational parts of America's criminal justice system. So we would especially encourage anybody who is studying law or considering studying law to, to tune in at, uh, at 6 o'clock. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you, Judith. Thank you. Thank you, Adon. Thank you, Samir Hikmet, and thanks again to all of you.